he's off in school and and um, I don't get a chance to see him that much and, and everything. We were praying for him uh, about a month or so ago. He traveled, took a 15 hour flight over to Japan, okay. stayed over there for about 20 days and um, and every time he sent pictures or videos, it looked like he was having a great time. And, uh, and I thank the Lord for bringing him back home. Amen. Amen. I got another Amen. grandson that's in um, Fort Knox, Kentucky. Amen. And today he will be flying to West Point Academy to stay for another couple of weeks. And uh, we pray that the Lord will protect him as he's going on his way. Amen. 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 But let's go to the word of God. I said last week that... Uh, by the time we finish with the book of Mark, you're going to be uh, a scholar in the book of Mark. Because today we're going back to the book of Mark. And we're going to the sixth chapter. And starting at verse number 16, we'll go through about verse 29. That's Mark chapter 6. And um, verse number 16. And um, we'll go through uh, verse number 9. If you... Uh, are able, you can stand as we read the word of God. I will be reading out of the New Living Translation, so you may want to bring that up on your tablet or your phone or what have you. Um, it says in verse 16, when Herod heard about Jesus, he said, John, the man I beheaded has come back from the dead. For Herod had sent soldiers to arrest and imprison John as a favor to Herodus. She had been his brother's wife, but Herod had married her. John had been telling Herod, it is against God's law for you to marry your brother's wife. So Herodian, Herodias, bear a grudge against John and wanted to kill him, but without Herod's approval, she was powerless. For Herod respected John, and knowing that he was a good and holy man, he protected him. Herod was greatly disturbed when he talked with John, but even so, he liked to listen to him. Herodias chance finally came on Herod's birthday. He gave a party for his high government officials, army officers, and the leading citizens of Galilee. Then his daughter, also named Herodias, came in and performed a dance that greatly pleased Herod and his guests. Ask me for anything you like, the king said to the girl and I will give it to you. Even vowed, I will give you whatever you ask up to half of my kingdom. She went out and asked her mother, what should I ask for? Her mother told her, ask for the head of John the Baptist. Lord Jesus. So the girl hurried back to the king and told him, I want the head of John the Baptist right now on a tray. Then the king deeply regretted what he had said, but because of the vows he had made in front of his guests, he couldn't refuse her. So he immediately sent an executioner to the prison to cut off John's head and bring it to him. The soldiers beheaded John in the prison, brought his head on a tray, and gave it to the girl who took it to her mother. And when John's disciples heard what had happened, they came to get his body and buried it in a tomb. I want to talk this morning from the subject, having too much power. Mm -hmm. Having too much power. Now, in order for us to understand the text that I just read, I need to define a word that's called flashback. Now the word flashback means to have a clear memory 
of a past event. And at some point in time in our life, all of us have had a flashback. Amen. Can I get a witness here this morning? Amen. Well, a few days ago, I was scrolling through um, Google, and I ran across, I think it was either Google or I was going through YouTube or something. Uh, but anyway, I was surfing the net. And I ran into or saw a group, and y'all just, just kind of uh, forgive me right now, but uh, uh, it, it, I ran across a group that was not a gospel group. Uh, it was an R&B group. And I know that some of you in here, when I call the name of the group, you're going to know who I'm talking about. <laughs> this group was called the Dales. <laughs> and uh, back in the day, uh, I know we ain't always been in church, so back, back in the day, mm -hmm. they had a song that they sang that was called Stay mm -hmm. in My What? All right, y'all. I knew y'all would know. I knew y'all would know that. Stay in my corner. Well, I had a flashback when I saw that because of call because I went back to my college days and I got a chance to uh, see the Dells perform in person. And I remember so vividly being in that college gym and everything. Uh, and uh, the guy, I can't remember his name, but he hit that note, stay, and he just kept holding it forever. Amen? Amen? And so back in the day, I wanted to have uh, a first tenor voice. Amen. I wanted to sing those high notes mm -hmm. because it seemed like the girls at college just loved yes. them yes. guys who could sing yes. real high. And, and, and so I wanted to do that, but I never was able to develop that, that first tenor type voice. Well, let me just move on just a little bit in my story here. Back when Co-Pastor Gene and I were dating, uh, I, I would search out songs uh, to put on my stereo, and I would put the songs on the stereo and so she could hear what I couldn't come up with, but I would let the, the, the guys who were singing, uh, they would sing what I would be thinking, but I didn't know how to put it together and stuff. But let me tell you what happened after we got married. You know what I learned? I learned that she put the phone down when I was playing the music and didn't even listen to it. I, after I'd have gone through all of that trouble to, to find one of those records to play and everything, uh, uh, she goes and put the phone down. And I guess she came back a little bit later to see if the music was playing. If it wasn't playing, uh, she would put the phone back up. But otherwise, it was still playing. But I would maybe go from one song to another and uh, and, 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 and all of that. And, and, and I'm telling you, I'm, I'm playing in all of this. I'm doing all of this and thinking that it was having some effect. And I didn't find out until we were married that she wasn't even paying that stuff no attention. You know, you, you think about that. How can you do that? I mean, I, I, I'm going through a whole lot of trouble trying trying to do this, you know, to be, be romantic and, and all of that and everything, but she wasn't even paying not a bit of attention. So in other, in other words today, in order to understand this text that we're sharing with you today, you have to understand something about having a flashback. So as we are looking at this today, we want you to understand that Herod and Tempus had a flashback, okay? Now, I wanted to share his flashback with you. Uh, from the scriptures, uh, we're not told how John the Baptist and uh, Herod and Tempus are uh, were connected. I don't know how they got together, I, but anyway, we know from the scriptures that that, that Herod really kind of liked John, and, and he paid attention to what John said, and sometimes he even followed the teachings of of, of uh, John the Baptist. But but nevertheless, he he uh, he was just not you know doing everything that John wanted him to do. Uh, um, so Bible scholars say that that he kept, meaning Herod, kept John the Baptist alive, you know, because he had kind of somewhat of a liking of John. He, he said, well, I may not agree with everything you're saying, but I, I really kind of appreciate what you are saying. But now we move kind of to the next thing, and we know that Herod and Tempest had a 
wife already. All right? He had a wife already. I want you to keep that in mind. And uh, so one day, he goes on a trip to Rome to visit um, his half-brother, who was named Philip. And what happened after he went to visit his brother, his stepbrother, or I think it was stepbrother, or half-brother, half-brother. And um, when he got there, he saw Philip's wife. And he just kind of fell in love with his brother's wife. Now, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I, I, I don't know, uh, and please don't let me know if you know somebody, but uh, uh, I don't know of anybody, uh, any guy that took his brother's wife. I, I don't know anybody that did that. If you know somebody, y'all don't tell me that, because I, uh, I, I might know him and everything. But, but he, he was so attracted to her that he had to, I don't know what kind of line he had. I, I, I don't know whether he put on some Lenny Williams or what he put on to get her to come home with him. But he did something to get her to come home with him. And, and uh, if I could just um, use my imagination today, let me just kind of uh, put this in some kind of language and stuff so you might understand. Like, what did he go through, you know, uh, what, you know, to get her to come? So maybe he told her, said, now look, because her name uh, was Herodias. Maybe he told her, he said, look, you're driving a BMW. If you come home with me, you won't have to drive a BMW no more. You will be able to drive a Bentley. Okay? And then maybe he told her, say, you know, you've been, you've been shopping and wearing Walmart clothes. But if you come home with me, you can wear Gucci and Louis Vuitton. I know. And, and, and maybe he said, I'm sure you got. And I don't know how many of these places are still around. But, but maybe he told us, say, you wear a Payless shoe. Mm -hmm. But if you come home with me, you can red, wear a red bottom shoe. Oh. <laughs> so whatever he told her, it convinced her that she should go home with him. Now, I told you a while ago that he already had a wife. Okay? So then what is he going to do? Tell me what the, what the wife he got. Okay? What's he going to do with her? Well, somehow or another, I don't know whether she got an Instagram message or got an uh, image, I mean, an insta, uh, instant message of what she got or she got a text or, 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 or maybe she got a, a TikTok message. I don't know. But anyway, she found out that he was bringing his brother's wife home with him. So she said, I better get out of here. Because if I don't get out of here, he probably when he get home, he going to kill me. So she goes back to live with her father. So we see here that Herod committed like two different sins. He, he, he had to put his own wife um, away. He probably threatened her or, or somehow or another knew she was going. And it was against the, 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 the word of God for him to do that. So this is what John the Baptist was preaching. Okay, He did not like John the Baptist telling him that it wasn't right for him to have this woman. And I guess she must have been beautiful. I don't know if she was, I don't know whether she was beautiful or not or what you know what she looked like. The Bible didn't tell her whether she was fine or whatever. But she did something to get his attention. And he was decided in his mind, I'm not leaving Rome until you go with me. Alright? So now let's look at what happened in the text. Okay, the first point I want you to look at, that's in verses 16 through 20. And that's the cost of speaking the truth. Can I say that one more time? Mm -hmm. The cost of speaking the truth. Now, sometimes you and I can get in a lot of trouble by just speaking the what? The truth. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times people don't want to <laughs> hear what we got to say. Because, you know, I, I'm like anybody else. There's sometimes the people that told me the truth, and it hurt. And I didn't want to hear it. But now nah, I didn't go cut the head off, though. But, uh, uh, and everything. But there is a cost of speaking the truth. Now, it says in verse 16, when Herod heard about Jesus, 
he said, John, the man I beheaded, has come back from the dead. So when he thought, when he started hearing Jesus preach the word, he thought that John the Baptist, the man that he had beheaded, had come back alive. So you know that must have scared him out of his mind to think that John the Baptist said, I done cut this man's head off. How could he be possibly coming back? So he thought that Jesus was John the Baptist. Now, have you ever seen somebody that remind you of somebody maybe back in the day that you knew that you were either afraid of or whatever the case was? And, um, and, and when you saw this person, it reminded you of a person, and then you thought um, for sure that was the person that you used to know. A few months ago, somebody made a post on Facebook. And it was with a guy, and I can't remember who else was in the picture. I didn't know the guy, but the guy looked like me. And I sent it to several people to see <laughs> if they could tell the difference between this person and me. And they said, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty nice picture. What, you know, where were you at? And all this kind of stuff. They were asking me questions about it. And I would let them go on, and then finally I would just tell them, that's not me. It, the man dressed like I would dress. He would wear, he had, I think he had on a baseball cap like I wear sometimes. And, and so he was about, maybe about my size and everything. And, and, and so many people that I sent the picture to, I had a lot of fun with it. And um, he looked like me. All right, I know some of y'all say, well, God help us that there's somebody else that looked like you. But anyway, uh, but I sent it to my sister-in-law, and she knew the guy. So it was it was closer than I thought. He was he lived somewhere around Youngstown, Ohio, where my sister-in-law lived. So here's this guy that looks like me. All right. Now somebody could have seen that guy somewhere, and uh, and they would have said, "I saw Sally so and so and so play." But they wouldn't have been me. So here we see uh, Herod is upset because he thinks that Jesus is John the Baptist. Okay? So John had been telling Herod, it's against God's law for you to marry your brother's wife. So now his 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 new wife. You know, maybe, no, nah, she would have been a side chick, but, so, but his new wife <laughs> bore a grudge against John the Baptist because she didn't like what he was saying. Because whatever Herod Antipas had told her to convince her to come home with him, she didn't want John the Baptist messing that up. Mm -hmm. I was talking to somebody the other day, and, um, they was telling me in this town where her husband was from, it was a small town, kind of like Congress, and you know, people knew everybody and, and all that, was, we can't say that about Congress anymore, but she said that her mother-in-law washed clothes for people and ironed them and all of that, and she thought that was belittling her to, uh, to have, you know, be washing other folks' clothes and ironing them and all that kind of stuff. And so uh, she said something to her mother-in-law about it. And her mother-in-law said, wait a minute, I know you're a city girl. You come down here to the country in Florida. You ain't going to mess up my good thing. Amen. So I'm making money off this. And I ain't going to let you stop me from making money. So the, the mother-in-law wouldn't, wouldn't have a problem. So this is kind of what uh, uh, Herodias was, was saying. She, she wanted John to stop preaching uh, what he was preaching. All right, so we see here in the first point here, and we're looking at this, we're looking at the cost of speaking the truth. So he, it costs John the Baptist to preach the truth. Now, let's see the danger of compromise. Let's look at verse 21 through 26. Herodias' chance came on Herod's birthday. He gave a party for his high government officials, mm -hmm. army officers, 
and the leading citizens of Galilee. Mm -hmm. So this group was made up of men, just men, I, I believe. Okay? So in other words, these were the more prominent people mm -hmm. in the town. Okay? And so then his daughter, also named Herodias, or some say Salome, came in, performed a dance that greatly pleased Herod mm -hmm. and his guests. And so after he was so excited about how she had danced, he said, ask me anything you want, and I will give you up to half of my kingdom after, you know, since you done did this. Well, let's kind of bring this a little closer to home to explain in a clean way uh, what was going on. Now, according to Bible scholars, she was not doing the wobble. She wasn't doing that lion dance, y'all. You know, y'all do. Amen. Amen. Okay. But now, let's look at the relationship between Herod and this young girl. Mm -hmm. This was his niece, oh, this was his brother's daughter. Mm -hmm. And it was also his, what, stepdaughter. Mm -hmm. All right, so they're connected. His brother's daughter. And it's now his stepbrother. So in other words, she should have been calling him Uncle Herod. But now look at what he does. She danced in front of a bunch of drunk men. Mm -hmm. And these drunk men get excited by the way she is dancing. All right? So he carried, Herod carried two titles. He was an uncle and, and to this young woman. And he was also the, uh, uh, his brother's daughter, and he was also a stepfather, okay? Now, my question is today, what kind of man would have his niece or even his stepdaughter coming in to a bunch of drunk men and entertaining them? Because the Bible says in the New Living Translation that she pleads. There. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, we kind of explain this in, a, in some more way. Back in the 60s, several guys I know went to a war called the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. And they came back and they told some stories. And one of the stories that they, they would often tell was about the relationships that they had with these young girls over in Vietnam. These girls were like 13 years old. Now, from what I understand, they had somebody that was called Mama Son and Papa Son. Mm -hmm. And Mama Son and Papa Son would parade these 13 year old girls out in front of the soldiers. And they could just walk up and down the line and choose which one they wanted. All right? Mm -hmm. But one of the things that bothered me after I got a little bit older, I was wondering what kind of mama and daddy mm -hmm. would put their daughter into a system of prostitution. Mm -hmm. What kind of man, what kind of father would do that? What kind of mother would do that? Well, I later learned that mama son and papa son were not the parents of these girls, but they were sex trafficking these girls. And these girls were coming out of poverty or whatever, and so whatever the soldiers gave them, uh, and I guess they had to share it with mama son and papa son because they were probably dressing them and, and all of that kind of stuff and, and everything, but... This, to them, was a better life than whatever they were living before. And, and so, when you think about this, let me kind of just bring this to kind of a, a different perspective, okay? Um, we have a problem in this nation with something called sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. It means that they take young girls who don't run away from home and... Um, they take them into the house, 
clean them up, buy clothes for them, and you know, fix it all up and fix them all up and everything. And then they set them out uh, to do work on the street. Now I remember this, I don't know, this was probably in the early 70s or something. I was working at Georgia Tech, and I had come across, I had parked my car across North Avenue, across from where Georgia Tech is, and, and I was walking to my job. And there was a man and a woman in a car. And he was screaming and hollering at her. And evidently she didn't make the money that he wanted her to make the night before. So he started slapping on this woman. And she was just crying and, and everything, but you know, they went on by and everything. And, and, uh, and I was just thinking that you got to live in that kind of abusive relationship. Well, anyway, if we look at this, mm -hmm. I want you to kind of understand that all these men, and even probably uh, Antipas, was drunk too. And then one of the things, after he done made this promise to her, in verse 24 it said, she went out and asked her mother, mm -hmm. what should I mm -hmm. ask for? Mm -hmm. She had danced. I don't know how old she was and, um, and everything, but she didn't know what she should ask for. Mm -hmm. But her mama mm -hmm. already knew what she would ask for. Mm -hmm. So she go to her mama and she asks mm -hmm. her mama, what do I ask for? And she says to the daughter, mm -hmm. go tell him that you want John the Baptist's head on a tray. Okay? So she hurried back to the king, told him, said, I want the head of John the Baptist right now on a tray. That's in verse 25. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes when you talk when you're drunk, you say things that you are later regret. Mm -hmm. So he was drunk. He made a promise that, see, he didn't know what he was going to be asked to do. He said up to half of his kingdom. So he probably was thinking, that, oh, I give her, some, you know, some some luxuries. I, you know, uh, I, I give her some material thing. But he had no idea that she would ask for the head of John the Baptist. Because I told you a little bit earlier, he admired John the Baptist. He didn't always do what he did, what he said. Sometimes he wouldn't do it. But because he had made this promise in front of the governors and all the, you know, officials of the town and all the highfalutin folk, sophisticated folk who, who were special in the town or whatever, he couldn't take it back. Right. He had to go through with it because then what that would say is that I'm not the man that I say I am. I'm supposed to have all this power, and it's dangerous sometimes when some people have a lot of power because of the fact that, you know, they're trying to do some things to really hurt and harm you, okay? Okay, now, let's look at the consequences of sin. Look at verses 27 through 29. So he immediately sent an executioner mm -hmm. to the prison to cut off John's head and bring it to him. The soldiers beheaded John in the prison. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how many of you have been around somebody who raised chickens, mm -hmm. but you know, back in the day when I was a kid growing up, my parents raised chickens. And, um, and when they got ready to cook them, the chicken was alive. And um, so they had to kill the chicken before they could cook them. And so what my dad would do, he had a chopping block where he would cut wood with. And he would hold the chicken by the feet, mm. lay their neck on that chop block, and he would take an axe, chew, and chop off their head. Amen. Well, then he would take the chicken and throw them out. Mm -hmm. And they would just jump, James, mm -hmm. you know, jump around because they didn't have a head on them. They'd be just jumping. So sometimes they didn't want them to jump all over the place. They would take another bucket 
We used to call them foot tubs back in the day. Y'all don't know about that. But foot tubs. They put the foot tub over the chicken. Mm -hmm. And the chicken would just jump up inside that, 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 that foot tub until the chicken eventually stopped jumping. Amen. So now can you imagine what happened to John mm -hmm. when they cut his head off like that? Mm -hmm. I don't know what they used to cut his head off. Maybe they used a the sword. But I would imagine in my mind, y'all, that John probably was body was jumping around and all of that during that time. Okay? So after they cut the head off, the men had brought the head on, on a tray and they gave it to the girl. And she immediately does what? She takes it to her mom. Mm -hmm. And when John's disciples heard that, what had happened, they came to get his body and they buried it in a tomb. Now, this story was because of the fact that Jesus was preaching the word of God. And it affected Herod so much, it, it frightened him because he thought that, that John the Baptist had come back to life. He heard about, people were telling him about this man named Jesus going around preaching about the kingdom of God and, and, and telling us we need to repent and learn of, of our sins and, and, and ask for forgiveness and all of that. He's preaching all of that. He's teaching and he's also healing people and all of that. And so Herod got scared. And he said, oh, this couldn't be happening. This man will come back to life. I told him just to chop his head off. I saw his head on a silver tray. I knew he was dead. And I don't know how he did this. How was he able to come back from the dead like this? So all I want to tell you today is sometimes you can have power. Mm -hmm. And you can abuse the power that you have. Mm -hmm. Sometimes some of us don't really need no whole lot of power Amen. because we will abuse it. Now, those of you that have been managers or supervisors on your job, you need to be careful sometimes with how you treat the employees that work under you and everything because you have that power to, you know, to fire them at any moment, let them go or whatever, and, and you know. Just one day you get up, as the old folks would say, on the wrong side of the bed, and you go in one day, and the person is five minutes late, and you just say, you're fired. Why? Because you can do that. So what I'm saying is, God has given us a lot of power. We have power in our spoken words. Amen. We can say a lot of things, and things will happen. But a lot of the things that we say and happen, they are negative things. And so we need to be conscious of how we use our tongues. Amen. Amen. And what we say and Amen. how we say it to other people and so forth. Because one of the things that you might do, you might condemn somebody. Mm -hmm. And later on you think they are out of your life. And you be like, oh, Antipas, well. Somebody that reminds you of that person will come back and make you think that person who you thought was out of your life is back in your life. So there's a problem with having too much power, especially when you use it in the wrong way. So let us be conscious of that. Let us be prayerful in how we use the authority, how we use the power that God has given us and use it in a more positive way. Amen. Use it to help others and so forth. So all I'm trying to say today is watch how you treat others. Watch how you do things to others and everything because God has given you somewhat of an advantage sometimes, but don't try to take advantage of people. But here in our story, Herod Antipas made a promise 
that he wished he could take it back. Amen. And you know, once that word get out of your mouth, and I know sometimes mm -hmm. we can say, I'm sorry, you are sorry, and everything, you apologize for it. Mm -hmm. But what happens is, when it comes out, many times it will hurt that person, and you can't rewind it and put mm -hmm. it back. Amen. It's just like, you know, squeezing a, a, a container of toothpaste. Once you get it out, you can't put it back in there. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. <laughs> the power, the problem of having too much power or the wrong kind of power. We're going to stop right now. There may be somebody here today, maybe in the sanctuary, you may be online, and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Today, I want to remind you that you don't have to go any longer without accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Sarah, how do we do that? Well, first of all, you just need to ask the Lord to forgive you of all your sin. And then you need to say with your mouth, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he died for my sin. And I also believe that God has raised him from the dead. But I want to stop by to tell you on this Sunday morning that not only did he die and he rise again, but Jesus is coming back again. And the Bible says he's coming back to receive the church up unto himself. And that's not the building. It's not the building that we're in. But he's talking about the people who make up that the body of Christ. I was at a funeral yesterday. A young man, 21 years old, went to sleep like Saturday a week ago. Didn't wake up the next morning. 21, no, he went to, went to sleep on Friday. Didn't wake up Saturday, last Saturday, yesterday a week ago. 21 years ago. <clears throat> it was so many young people at that funeral yesterday. And I couldn't help but feel something with all of those children that some of them probably don't know Jesus. That's why I started asking the Lord, how can we in the Bible, ones who us who come to church every Sunday, how can we make a difference? And all I was able to just come up with is the fact that because some of we don't have no relationships with, all we can do is pray mm -hmm. and ask God to send messengers to those people. And if you run across some of them, and I, and I think that what happened yesterday in the funeral service, I think that many of the young people realize that they're young, but they can die too. You don't have to be old to die. You can be young and still leave out of this world. Mm -hmm. Just go to the end graveyard. There's some big graves and there are little graves. Some don't even get a chance to live too many days and they are out of here. But I just want to say to you today, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, today is a good day to do it. If you're online today, just inbox us at the church and just tell us that I want to become a part of the body of Christ. And we will accept you as a virtual member in the Church of New Beginning. Or you go to our website, send us an email. CONB.online. That's where we are. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. At this time, we're going to give you an opportunity to give. If you'd like to give, you can give by a check, cash, and you can get an envelope uh, in the back. If you want to give through our apps, you can give through Zelle, or you can give through Givelify. However the Lord leads you to give, we appreciate everything that you do. Again, I just want to say to all of you, I thank God for each and every one of you. I thank God for you taking time out of your schedule to either come to 31 
50 Highway 20 South, Cunyans, Georgia 30013, or if you're online watching us, Church of New Beginnings on Facebook, and you can also watch us on our website. But I just want to say, I appreciate you all. Some of you I don't think I have met before, and I want to get a chance to meet you before uh, we go home today. And uh, I just want to say thank you. Uh, thank you. It means a lot to us. It means a lot to me and the rest of Church of New Beginning for you to take time out of your schedule today to come and be a part of this service. Amen. 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 And I want to just close with this impartation. It comes out of Numbers chapter 6, verse 24. It says, May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you peace. peace. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest rule abide here for now and forevermore. And all of God's people said amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening and afternoon and a wonderful week. Amen. Amen. Thank you.